Hello everyone, it's Pojo, and uh, we are recording. We are talking about the current patch changes for patch 1.11, and there have been some interesting balance changes today that I wanted to talk about. Most of them have been basically an effort to slow down Recano and add some really interesting control and mid-range options to Felm. And I think that both of those are going to be interesting to talk about, so let's go ahead and go through the patch list and the changes. First things first, though, I want to mention that the promo card system is now in Eternal. There aren't any promo cards out yet, but what's going on is there is going to be a monthly card that... Uh, a monthly or possibly bi-monthly card that shows up as an achievement through play. And uh, essentially what happens is you get to earn up to four copies of it through play, and then that gets added to your deck. It'll be a purple rarity card, essentially. And when you get it, it'll allow you to, like, essentially add a card to the set that doesn't exist right now. So that's going to be really fascinating. It's one of the things they promised early on in Eternal is that there would be sort of a living meta where new cards are consistently being added even between sets, meaning that the meta is consistently changing as people try out new decks and try out new cards and see where they fit. I think that's going to be really fascinating, and I'm really excited about that change. That being said, let's talk about Rakano. So Rakano has gotten some interesting changes to it, mostly made in an effort to uh, slightly nerf it and also to slow it down. And that part's really actually pretty important. It's not just that they're trying to uh, make all of the cards weaker. Some of these cards are actually still relatively strong or even stronger as a result of what they've got going on but they're only strong in the later parts of Rakano, and Rakano really doesn't do that right now. Most of the Rakano decks are either really fast aggressive decks that use lots of creatures, or they're really fast Warcry decks that also use lots of small creatures, and then are like, well, I'll get like an 11-11 Elder Feather out. Um, this gives them a couple more options at like 5, at uh, five cost in particular. Uh, there's there's not many changes there, but uh, there were already some interesting options in that area, and mid-range Rakano might be a thing now, in particular because of the change to Deep Forge Plate. All right, let's go down the list, and I'll, we'll start with the Fearless Nomad since that's the cheapest card on the list. Okay, so Fearless Nomad just lost Overwhelm. It's now a 3-1, just completely vanilla and a hybrid creature. This is still a pretty decently statted card that you can get out fairly early in Rakano, and I think that that's reasonably strong, uh, but it isn't as bonkers crazy as it used to be. You used to be able to put a lot of weapons on this thing, and it would just kind of be really hard to deal with or block. Um, it was kind of aggressive and uh, pretty hard to d deal with. I think with the loss of Morningstar in particular, Fearless Nomad maybe didn't necessarily need to lose Overwhelm, but it was a very, very powerful card for a one-drop, and uh, at the moment it's still quite a strong card for a one-drop. Overall, uh, this change is pretty simple, but it also makes Fearless Nomad a card that I just don't want to play. I don't like vanilla creatures all that much. Um, I think it'll still see some play, play in Ranked, but there are a lot of good, cheap options for Rakano right now, and uh, as a result, it might see a lot less play. Rakano Artisan. So this is a, a change that affects Armory only, and the Armory deck is the deck that plays like a bunch of different Relic weapons. Um, I, there are some Rakano decks that occasionally use Artisan as well, but uh, in general they, they don't care quite as much about Rakano's... Well, no, they actually care even more, but there's there's a little less Rakano Artisan in there, and they don't they probably can cycle something out and do pretty well without it. So what happened with Artisan is he lost one health. He's now a two one instead of a two two. Uh, that's going to be surprisingly relevant when it comes to getting rid of the Artisan. It's not going to be relevant in terms of his summon ability, which is still an extremely strong ability that uh, gives you a lot of control in the late game. Uh, yeah, so Rakano Armory decks are going to win a little bit less by rushing you down. You'll be able to block them a little bit more efficiently. And 1-1 uh, blockers, snowballs, uh, harbingers bite, a lot of cards that just deal like one damage are actually going to be a lot better as a result of both this change and uh, uh, the other changes essentially to Fearless Nomad. Like little, little one drops are going to be a little bit more effective at blocking big creatures and giving you some more strategic options in the early game if you're a mid-range deck. Um, overall, this uh, card nerf is probably warranted, but uh, in general I never had problems with uh, 
this with armory in midrange before, and uh, midrange really never deals with anything that has one health or two health. It doesn't really care too much about that difference, since it's mostly just trying to use lightning storm to clear out aggressive creatures. Uh, this is this is going to be a relevant change, but Rakana Artisan is still going to be used everywhere. There's there's absolutely no reason why this will cause Artisan to fall off the list. Okay, uh, Burnout. Now this is actually a pretty substantive change. Uh, burnout was changed from 3 cost to 4 cost, and there is a space in Burnout. Um, yeah, this is pretty significant. Uh, the mana for damage is actually quite inefficient now, and the main thing that's actually really difficult about this is that uh, Burnout was very often used as a way to counteract like a lightning storm or any sort of like fast spell that was used to kill a bunch of your creatures all at once. Now you can't really do that quite as much. Burnout is a little bit less tricky and uh, that's fairly important. It's still strong as a finisher and uh, it is obviously a good way to just deal a bunch of damage to your opponent. But I think at this point people might also start looking more at cards like uh, Obliterate, which is a five cost that does six and has Overwhelm. Uh, and it's just like a ton of value in that particular uh, respect. But still, it has its place as a fast spell, it has its place as a finisher. The 8 damage off of it was very, very strong with ticking granite in, and will still be somewhat strong in the future. I think overall red decks are going to get a little bit, or red deck win decks are going to be a little bit less prevalent on the ladder as a result of Burnout's nerf. Okay, so the two equipment that got hit. Morningstar. Uh, this one's pretty strange. Morningstar went up from a 3-2 to a 4-3, and it went up from 2 cost to 4 cost. So it's much less stat efficient, and that's fairly important. Um, but it's also just a little bit better at making that creature, like, just out of range of torch, making that creature just a little bit harder to kill, and also giving that creature a really surprising burst of stats. Overall, I think this card is a lot worse for wear. Uh, the 3-2 at 2 was very, very strong. Crownwatch Longsword will probably be the replacement for that slot, and it's a 2-2 for 2, and that's still a pretty decent piece of equipment. Uh, now, there's a kind of interesting mid-range slot for this card that may exist as like a 1 or 2 of. I don't think we'll ever see 4 of this card in Rakano again. Um, if we do, it'll be for, for something very mid-rangey. It'll be kind of strange. Uh, but yeah, I think overall this card's uh, quite a bit weaker, and maybe won't see quite as much play. Deep Forge Plate. Uh, this card's still awesome, but it has gone up to 5, and it now gives plus 5, plus 5, instead of plus 4, plus 4. So basically every 4 is now a 5. Uh, yeah, this is pretty significant. The main thing it's doing is slowing down Rakano decks quite a bit. So... It's just making it so that they can't quite kill you as fast as they used to with Deep Forged Plates. But you still get that like kind of epic Warcry Deep Forged Plate, and it's even more epic now for the cost that it has. Um, and it's still going to just like run rush out of your opponent. Giving something that many stats plus Overwhelm is just a beating, especially if you put it on something that has uh, Aegis or Lifelink. Uh, I'm looking at you, Silverwing Familiar. I think this card's very, very strong still. I think this card uh, puts Rakano a little bit more into the mid-range, but overall it's still probably going to be a 2-4 to four of in a lot of decks, and I think it's a, still a great ranked weapon. Um, yeah, significant nerf, but uh, not as significant as the Morningstar nerf, and in some ways this card is a little bit better, because it's just a little bit more values for one card. Um, and yeah, if you can get a lot of stats on one card, that can be very, very helpful to you sometimes. Okay, uh, so the other thing we have to talk about is Felm. So Felm colors mostly have one deck, and that deck is Champion of Cunning. Uh, it's such a popular deck, in fact, that most Felm decks are running, like, Felm plus, uh, Stonescar. So they're running red in addition to blue and bl uh, primal and shadow. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Feln is primal and shadow colors. Um, so uh, right now there aren't like a whole lot of interesting things for that deck to do. Mostly they play down a couple of creatures and they play down Champion of Cunning. Um, I'm not a fan of Champion of Cunning. I don't like Champion of Cunning very much. I will use Champion of Cunning because I kind of like Feln and I really like a lot of the things that they do in that those colors. But... Uh, What's currently being added are a lot of interesting options that are going to 
increase the ability of Felm to have more competitive decks and also just have decks that don't necessarily run Champion of Cunning to win. Uh, I recently built a Felm control deck under the new changes. Uh, mostly I made use of the new Felm Bloodcaster. I will be talking about that in just a second. But first things first, Black Sky. All right, so Black Sky Harbinger went from a 3-4 to a 3-5. Now, I've talked about Black Sky Harbinger a little bit in my hybrid video, which I don't think is even out on YouTube yet. I might re-record it uh, just because there have been so many changes to the hybrid cards, Rakano and Felm. Um, so this card is quite a bit tougher, but the summon effect on it is deal one damage to each enemy, and it does get lifesteal for each of the damage that it deals. So what this card is really, really good at is just stone-cold dropping aggro decks. If there is a lot of little aggressive 1-1s one on the field, if there's a lot of little Grenadin on the field, this thing gains you a ton of life and kills everything, and that's really, really good. And uh, there are a lot of creatures that now have 1 health that are, you know, a bit more relevant, like, for example, Rakano Artisan. Uh, the extra toughness on this card makes it quite a bit uh, stronger overall. It's a little bit less... It's a little bit less easy to kill, and overall that's going to be very important because Black Sky Harbinger wants to keep swinging at you and stealing that 3 life a turn. So, yeah, that's uh, pretty relevant. I think this card is quite a bit stronger as a result, and it was already a pretty strong pick if you wanted to deal with aggro decks. Uh, it's not as significant as the other change that they made to Jotun Hurler against aggro decks, but I think this card's very good. Okay, here's a fun one. Felm Bloodcaster. This card used to grant deadly to every unit, and now, instead, it, they've taken that ability away and they've given it a new ultimate, which is pay 7 to draw a card from each player's deck. I love this change. This is amazing. So, Felm Bloodcaster used to be, like, kind of a weird fit. It had that strange influence requirement, the 2 shadow and 1 primal, that made it fairly difficult to play on turn 3, and the only thing that it really did was give everything deadly, which mostly worked if you were trying to run some sort of aggressive strategy, but there weren't that many aggressive cards that cared if they had deadly in Primal and Shadow. Uh, like, most Primal and Shadow cards have abilities like Unblockable, or they already have deadly, or they have flying. In those instances, Feld Bloodcaster didn't do a lot. It had very good stats. The 2-5 for 3 is actually quite strong. It's a good, like, just piece of meat that sticks out there and prevents you from, like, attacking into it. It does a lot to save your health, and uh, what that card does now is very similar to what it did then, but it also has a cool ultimate. So the pay 7 to draw a card from each player's deck effect is not like the most efficient way that you can spend your power every turn or anything like that, but it does give you 2 card advantage. It occasionally steals something useful off of your opponent's deck, but similar to the pilfer effect, most of what you'll get is extra power. Um, and overall, I think this card is very, very strong in control. I built a control deck already that tries to go to the late game using Felm Bloodcasters, uh, Westwind Heralds, and then just basically runs people out with Dimensional Rifts and Channel the Tempest. Uh, and that ended up being very strong. Like, I think this card is quite worthwhile in that particular respect. Uh, yeah, so overall, I think this card is really fantastic. Um, I'm, I'm really excited about this design. It's basically a new design that's been added to the set, and that's really cool. I'm looking forward to seeing what people accomplish with this card, but I've also got a deck and master with it that's already uh, doing very well, and I'm really excited about it. Okay, next up, Jotun Hurler. This is one of my favorites. So Jotun Hurler is already a card that I have waxed poetic about uh, in my primal card breakdown. And uh, it was a 3-4 then, it's now a 4-4. Four, four. So I think this card is an auto-pick and draft, um, because first off, it gives you the Snowball. The Snowball is incredibly useful early on for stalling aggro, for killing Oni Ronins, for killing all sorts of things that have one health, and uh, there are even just a couple more that have one health now. But secondly, this card is actually like really kind of neat, because it's going to put your opponent on a clock, while also being like a pretty sizable body that can block for you. I think this card is really strong right now. I think it's got a very good place in ranked, and I think in draft you should just you should draft this every time because it's it's just amazing. It's it's so much value. Um, it's gonna get you a card for the cost of half a card, and then it's gonna be a very reasonable body at five. So this card is great. Uh, the last one that changed was Jotun Avalancher, or uh, Avalanche Stalker, I believe it's called. 
Uh, yeah, uh, and they said Jotun Avalanche in the patch notes, but uh, yeah, this changed from a 2-5 to a 3-4. This is a much less awkward set of stats, and Avalanche Soccer might actually see some play as a result. Um, I think it's still a little too expensive for ranked, but overall this card has like a really interesting deal where it can, you know, run out and block something that really is relevant, like a 3-3 and just murder it dead, and then you'll have, once again, a really reasonable body for a decent price. Uh, that kind of advantage is pretty relevant. I think this card's much, much better in draft in particular, and overall I think that's going to be a really cool change. Um, that should be it for the changes. Avalanche, Hurler, Bloodcaster, Harbinger, Burnout, Artisan, Nomad, Morningstar, and Deep Forged Plate. Uh, so yeah, total of nine card changes cards changed. Uh, there have been some slight draft changes. Death Strike has moved from unco from common to uncommon, which is going to make Shadow Decks a little bit weaker as a result. Uh, Sabotage is now a common in its place from uncommon, which is a pretty strong Shadow card, and overall like you want like maybe one or two of these in your deck. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit... it's going to be a little bit too prevalent, prevalent, I think, but overall you shouldn't necessarily pass this up if it gets past you at the bottom of the deck. Um, Oathbook has been moved up to rare, uh, that's really good because Oathbook was just bonkers nuts in draft, like, it was a really really good card at Uncommon, uh, it absolutely transformed games, and it's a fun card in general. Uh, this card definitely had a lot of strength in draft, and I think if you get it at rare you definitely should. Go ahead and use it. Uh, Privilege of Rank has been moved to Uncommon in its place, and this one is going to help you enable some power decks, it's going to help you enable some like really slow rolling decks in draft, and then it'll give you a couple of, couple of new interesting options. I'm interested to see if people take this card and what they do with it, because it does provide card advantage uh, in the form of sigils, and also is just like a really interesting like sort of ramp effect that gives you a bit more consistent mana, or consistent power. Uh, yeah, apart from that, that's, that's all of the changes for now, and I will be streaming uh, Monday through Friday with Wednesdays off, usually around 7 p.m. PST on Twitch. If you would like to come by and watch the stream, uh, if you like this video, like and subscribe, that's always good. But uh, in general, yeah, just thanks for watching. See you about.